South District of New York. New York. These technicians are importing microfilm from 1901, containing marriage certificates from New York. While nearby, employees watch over machines that are quickly cycling through pages from a city directory from 1958. Just a few feet away, these crumbling French law books are being carefully turned page by page and photographed, all for posterity. The room at Ancestry headquarters in Provo, Utah, is where some documents that end up online are first scanned and uploaded. They arrive from places like the National Archives. That one's from Connecticut. Though some collections are considered so rare that these camera stands are dispatched and teams of Ancestry employees are deployed to take photos wherever the records are stored. It was in an uh, archive in northern Italy and all the records were down in the basement and they'd had a fire there. So about half of the records, these are uh, marriage records from the 1700s in Italy. So our team spent weeks just preparing the documents, making sure we could read everything, um, scanning those records and, and preserving that history. So if you've got ancestors that had, you know, a marriage or a, a, a presence in that community, you can actually see the uh, handwriting of somebody who was present when they were married. It's pretty uh, fantastic, I think. The orderly stacks of data to be pulled into the system, all barcoded, don't offer a true glimpse of what is happening at Ancestry. It's in the middle of another round of large-scale hiring, the third year the company is looking to bring at least 150 technologically focused new hires to the company, both in Provo and San Francisco. The takeaway should be we're investing a lot in technology and we really deem it to be you know, our future. Uh, and so these are things that we've been trying to hatch behind the scenes over the course of the last six months to a year. Or Dee Forstner. Oh, that's my uh, second cousin, I bet. Okay. It's also unleashing new beta versions of added features to Ancestry.com, along with the shift in mindset that is propelling the site's technological innovations. One of the beta phase technologies is called Gridline. It's software that makes a once static historical document more interactive by highlighting the names of ancestors and explaining what each of the boxes on a census record means without having to know each grid's criteria by reading the top. It seems like a no-brainer for hard to decipher handwriting on a census form, but that ease of use factor was actually quite complicated behind the scenes. The UK 1911 census we took a look at that, we thought there might be 11 different form types we'd have to account for. By the time we were done, we found 46 different form types, every single one of which has to be specifically accounted for and exactly laid out so that our software can recognize and link to it. Everything from your standard English censuses to, I believe that we found censuses that were in Hebrew, all of those have to be accounted for and made sure that we can transcribe them and present them correctly on the website. Another new beta initiative, a DNA test. Especially useful for members whose ancestors were slaves, it can pinpoint a user's ancestry to a specific tribe in Africa. Let's be honest, as the price continues to plummet, I think DNA will play a massive part of any future family history efforts. So we're really trying to get ahead of the curve. Um, and as Sarah was saying, you know, the combination of uh, biological you know, DNA data combined with pedigree information that people have uh, generated through our service, plus the human beings behind that. It's actually a really amazing combination that no one else has offered yet. Ancestry's employees are about to be slammed with more work. The 1940 census will be released April 2nd, a big deal for genealogists. But it will take a few months to get all the gridline information on those documents, too. From Provo, Utah, Carrie Davis, IDG News Service.